What's up guys, my name is Daryl Wilson and today in this video I'll be showing you guys how to write blog posts that rank really high on Google. Now this is going to be my second part series of my Rank Math tutorial. So in the first video I made with Rank Math, I showed you guys a little bit about the general options. I also showed you how to optimize your pages with Rank Math. So for this video, I'll be covering a variety of options and rules that you should follow when you are writing blog posts for your website. We'll be talking about how much content you should write what are do follow and no follow backlinks, what is keyword density, and also how domain authority will affect your blog post. So I'll be covering all of this today in this Rank Math tutorial. So with all that said, let's get started with this tutorial on how to write blog posts that rank high. All right, so today in this video, I'll be showing you how to create high ranking blog posts in three simple steps using the Rank Math SEO plugin. However, before we begin, if you guys have not seen my previous Rank Math tutorial, you guys can go ahead and watch this. In this video, I show you how to optimize your website using Rank Math. I show you how to submit your website to the Google Search Console and also how to submit your sitemap to Google and all of the various settings with Rank Math. So be sure to check that out. So step one, we'll be first talking about how to actually create a blog post. So I'll be showing you what to include in your blog post, how much content you should write, what is keyword stuffing, and also the structure of your blog post and how you should create it. So here I give you an example, like the title, the opening, the subheader. We'll be talking all about this in step one. Step two, I'll be showing you all the options with the Rank Math SEO plugin. So I'll be referring to all these options, explaining to you what they mean, and also some of them that aren't that important. And I'll kind of go through each of these and explain to you and just give you a general, um, you know, general rundown of all these options right here and how to get a good score with the Rank Math SEO plugin. I'll also be showing you about these snippets. So I'll be showing you how you can uh, submit your posts to Google and how it's to effectively write them and make them look uh, good in the search engine. I'll be talking all about that in step two. Step three, we'll be talking about a little bit more of the technical factors like what is page authority, what is domain authority, and also the difference between a do follow back link and a no follow back link. So uh, I'll talk all about that in step three. I actually have a tutorial videos and I've used that from another video and I'll put them in this video here at the end. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to this blog post that I have created specifically for this video. And we're gonna go ahead and follow this guide and we'll talk about uh, how to actually effectively write a blog post before we jump into the settings with Rank Math. So the first thing that we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to actually find out what do you wanna write about? Now that can be a bit overwhelming when you are first getting started out, but you guys can use uh, the Google Trends tool. Now what the Google Trends tool will do is that it'll actually show you what people are searching for. So for example, if you are in the health and fitness and you wanna talk about the protein shakes or diet pills, or workout equipment, you guys can use Google Trends to kind of get an idea of the search volume and if people are interested in this topic. So for example, we have best protein shakes and you guys can see that the best protein shakes isn't as popular as uh, workout equipment or diet pills. It looks like diet pills uh, you know, in January, February are more important so, or more search. That's probably because uh, people gain weight during the, you know, the Christmas season and they want to, you know, they want to lose weight fast. So uh, you guys can actually just click on add comparison and you can type something in. So for example, I'll type in jumping jacks. I don't know if that's popular or not, but we'll just type it in. And yeah, you can see that, uh, you know, people are searching for it. So you guys can kind of use this tool to kind of get ideas of what to write about. Now, personally, a good strategy, guys, is to kind of diversify your content. So you might want to write about all four of these topics. You don't really want to write about the most competitive keyword out there because even though your content's good, it might not rank well because there's so much competition out there. So when you are writing content, try to diversify your content as much as possible to just, you know, to accommodate all of your readers, not just one specific reader who wants to know about protein shakes, right? So go ahead and do some keyword research. Now, that also leads us with a keyword research of topics. Now, a good way to find topics on uh, things to write about is, here, I'll give you guys a shortcut here. We'll go to Google. So here I'll type in jumping jacks. Now, right away, you guys can see there is a lot of keywords that we can get some ideas from. So jumping jacks for weight loss, jumping jacks workout, jumping jacks for kids. So I'll just do this one, Jumple jacks, jumping jacks, muscles worked. Now, a good strategy here also is to scroll down to the bottom of the page 
And these right here are additional keyword topics that people are searching for. So you can do uh, 500 jumping jacks a day results, jumping jacks in the morning, and so on and so forth. So you guys can use Google to get some really good uh, keyword ideas and topics to write about for your blog. So that'll be your first step, is to actually find the contents to actually write about and just do some general research. On this blog post, I do have other tools that you guys can use that'll actually help you guys get more information of what to write about. And next, let's talk about reader's intent. So when you're writing your blog post, guys, it's kind of important to kind of diversify your content. In fact, on my YouTube channel alone, I diversify my content as much as possible. So for example, you know, we have videos on rank math, right? But this is for an audience that already knows how to use WordPress. So maybe creating a video on how to make a website with WordPress is something ideal for beginners. Also, this uh, video right here, this is created for people who are already experienced with page builders using WordPress. So you wanna diversify your content for different audiences. So for beginners, intermediate, experienced, and so on and so forth. So for example, we have transactional uh, intent, and this can be something like top 10 best um, protein shakes to buy. That's a transactional intent. So you wanna create uh, content around these four different intents. You might also wanna do something like informational intent, which is something like the jumping jacks 500 a day. You know, you're not really selling anything. You're just kind of getting people in that niche. You're just kind of trying to gather people that are all interested maybe in protein shakes, in diet pills and jumping jacks and just exercise in general. So you wanna go ahead and diversify your content onto different categories. So I think transactional intent is good, uh, informational intent, uh, navigational intent. This is kind of like the, um, I guess YouTube refers them to uh, as an affinity audience. So people who are already experienced and just wanna kind of just read up more and kind of improve themselves. So that's uh, some good contents to write about. And then next we have create an outline. And it's actually funny, in fact, this same blog post that we're actually using, we follow this same exact, um, we follow this same exact uh, structure here. So when you first write an article, you wanna create a title. You know, you wanna just create your main keyword. So what are you writing about? Well, even in this article right here, we have how to, how to write high ranking blog posts. And below that, we have just some more information about what they're gonna be reading about, in fact, I checked out these other two articles here, and this is kind of like, it's, it's answering the problem. So why did they click on the blog post? Well, for example, we have the best drones under $200, and here they're saying, yeah, you know guys, it's really hard to find it, we understand, we are here to help you. Same thing with this article, you know, we understand it's hard to find drones, blah, 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 but we're here to help you. And these websites just wanna make commissions, yet they also wanna provide value. Same thing right here on my blog post. So we talk about, you know, hey, do you wanna start blogging, yada, yada, yada. Well, we're here to help you and we're gonna tell you how to do it. So when you first write an article, you wanna create an opening. You wanna create something that's going to tell the readers what the blog post is about and what they will expect to learn. Next, you have the subheader, which is basically the meat of the article. So for example, we have how to write high-breaking blog posts. So it's like, let's get started with this. Let's go ahead and talk about, you know, whatever we wanna talk about. The same thing I've done with my article here. So the best drones for under $200. And then we have a table of contents. And then here we go. We have the best drones for under $200. Uh, under $200. And this is called the H2 tag. So the H2, again, that's kind of like where your main argument starts. And then from here, we start listing drones. Now we're listing different type of drones. And we're also including our keyword in here throughout our article because we wanna, you know, we wanna strive for that keyword. And we'll talk more about keyword density a little bit later. But uh, yeah, so that's just an idea. The subheader again is where you wanna start introducing your main content. And the subheader three, this is where you wanna back up your arguments. So this is where you wanna like, you know, kind of say, look, like for example, we'll scroll down here and we'll keep going. So now we're like, you know, write longer content. Now we're kind of, we're backing up our argument saying, this is what you should do on top of how to write a, a high ranking blog post. So again, the H3, this can be various things. This can just be a different topic or maybe a subtopic, or it could just go ahead and back up your original arguments. And then you have your content and then you wanna finish it off with a call to action at the bottom. So when users are scrolling on these, these, uh, these blogs here, you're gonna notice that when they go to the bottom, it's like, oh, now check out the drones under $300. And then they interlink another article. So 
you always want to go ahead and keep the readers on your website as much as possible. So that's why you want to introduce a call to action, like another blog, or you want to talk about, you know, another, maybe another website you got or something like that. But uh, that's a good idea is to have that call to action at the bottom of the website. Now, let's go ahead and talk about some general rules to follow when you are uh, writing your content. Now, number one, make sure to optimize your blog post images. So for example, if we go to jumping jacks right here, you're going to see all these different images, right? Now, how do these images actually get brought up here on the Google search? This is because they've inserted the alternative text on their images on their blog. So for example, if I click on this drone right here and click on edit, you're going to see this alternative text. Now, every single image that you upload, you want to make sure you include this because you want to describe the purpose of this image. So here I have quadcopter or some sort of drone for beginners. And that might be something that is related to my article. And the reason why you want to fill this out is because this will usually propagate and show up in the Google search results as well. And let's be honest, how many times have you guys used the Google search images? I have tons of times. So you want to make sure that whenever you add uh, images that you optimize them and you say what they are. So that's very, very important. And let's go ahead and keep scrolling down here. Now, another thing I want to talk about, I think I missed it here is how much content you should write. Well, you generally wanna keep your content, I wanna say above a thousand words, because you can see here, now this is a study done by backlinko.com, and they found that the more content you put in your articles, the better it ranks. And there could be a lot of reasons for that, but Google just believes that uh, since the content, or since the article has more content, that it tends to be more valuable, it tends to be more, uh, you know, it tends to be worth more than articles with just 500 words. So that's just a general uh, rule of thumb. You want to probably keep your articles above a thousand words. I believe this article that I made, uh, this one right here that we're actually uh, that we're actually reading, this is around 2,000 words alone. So uh, you guys can see that I'm following what I'm preaching, right? I'm not just BSing you. So, but yeah, you want to keep it. Uh, you know, try to follow this this guide on the the words, and that's just something to consider. Next, let's go ahead and talk about the actual keyword stuffing. So what is keyword stuffing? Well, keyword stuffing is essentially when you include your keyword too many times in your article and Google will penalize you for doing that. For example, we have best drones for under $200. Now, if I copy this and I paste this 100 times in my article, Google doesn't like that. And that's called keyword stuffing. And you can get penalized by Google for doing that. So that's really not a good thing to do. So. For example, let's just say I'm writing this article and I take this text editor, you know, and I really want to rank, I really want to rank for the best, uh, you know, the best drones for under $200. And I start doing this, you know, I start doing this right here. So if I introduce the keyword too many times, Google believes that this content is not really valuable. And at this point, I'm just keyword stuffing to rank for this keyword. Now, this is a big gamble to actually have too much keyword density. So you wanna make sure that you keep it below four, I wanna say we're on 4%. So I believe that uh, your keyword should appear no more than four to 5% of your total article. So again, what that means is, let's say for example, we're trying to rank for the best drones for under $200. This keyword should not appear more than 5% of the time in your article. So. Just try to make your content as relevant and as good value as, as possible. And again, we understand you're writing about your, you know, your topic, but just try not to keyword stuff. And that's pretty important. Next, we're going to talk about interlinking and outbound links. Now, as you're writing your article, it's very, very important to interlink to good sources and also to other sources within your own website. The reason why this is good is because Google believes that your website is easier to navigate. And they believe that since your website's easier to navigate and also you have outbound links that you're participating with other websites. For example, we have this outbound links right here. And this is an example of an outbound link. So if I click on this, it'll then take them to this article about outbound links. And this is just another article where they can get more information. So Google likes that and they believe that your website is participating with other blogs. So you wanna go ahead and have outbound links. Now, what is interlinking? And interlinking is also very, very important. And uh, again, Google will actually boost you up in the search results 
if you interlink your articles together because Google believes that your website is easy to navigate. So you can see here how I'm talking about the Yoast plugin. And if I click on this right here, now you can see that we're going to another article. Now I should really update this article. It's really, really old. But this is an example of interlinking where I'm linking them to other articles on my website. So again, Google really does like interlinking. They find that um, the more you do it, the easier it is for users to navigate on your website. Thus, the quality of your content is more valuable. So then you will go higher in the search results. So that's an example of interlinking. And it's very important to have that on your current WordPress websites. So let's go ahead and keep scrolling down. And then we have our final thoughts. And right here, I probably could have introduced something like the call to action like I talked about. So I probably want to say, hey, did you like this article? Go read my article on the Rank Math plugin. In fact, I did link the video. So essentially, that's kind of the same thing there. But that's just an example of how you want to finish off all your blog posts with some sort of call to action. I don't know why that's blurry. It's weird, huh? Yeah, there we go. I don't know, it's blurry or something like that. So, but yeah, so that's just a reason on why you don't want to, or that's that's the main reason on why you want to add a call to action on the bottom of your blog posts. All right, so now that you guys have an understanding of how to actually write blog posts and you have some understanding of keyword density and interlinking, let's go back to our website right here and let's talk about uh, what we should include and how to have, uh, you know, how to get our green check mark with the rank math. Now, before I begin, guys, the green check mark or the green letters with rank math, it is not that important, okay? So do not take it like the gold, okay? You could have a 70 out of 100 and still have an article on the first page of Google. So don't worry, but I'll go through each of these options. So here we have the focus keyword. And again, the keyword is essentially what you wanna rank for. So best drones for under $200, top 10 best protein shakes, and so on and so forth. And you guys can actually uh, go check out their there are Google Trends or whatever you want to do. We already done that before, but let's go ahead and talk about the basic SEO and uh, what these are. Now, one thing to note that this says pillar content. Now, pillar contents are basically guides or eBooks, or they're essentially like complete guides on something. So this really isn't pillar content. So I'm going to uncheck that. So best drones for under $200, that's not considered pillar content. So, but again, guides, eBooks, and full tutorials would be considered something like pillar content. So first things first, we have the focus keyword in our title, right? So yeah, we have our best drones for under $200, right? The focus keyword used in the meta of the meta description. Now we'll talk more about that a little bit later, but uh, they're just referring to having that same keyword in your meta description in the search results. I don't know what that is, D -d 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 -k. <laughs> but yeah, that's a, that was a, uh, an accident. But yeah, so that's what that's referring to. Focus keyword not found in the URL. Now guys, that's really not that crucial, but it still actually is in the URL. So the best drones for under 200 are for picks. So it looks like Rank Math, they can't really pick up every single word and they can't really sort it out, but you guys can see it is in our permalink, but this is really not that crucial. So don't take that too literal, okay? And then we have the focus keyword appears in the first 10% of the contents. Now this is actually good. So as you're writing your article, you wanna introduce your keyword a few times. So best drones for under $200. And then right here again, we have the drones under $200 under $200 and so on and so forth. So when you're writing your article, you do wanna put your keyword in the beginning and also throughout your article to make people understand that your article is about your focus keyword, all right? So that's just something to consider. Next, we have the focus keyword found in the content, duh, right? I mean, we have to have it in there. Next, you have the content is 1600 words long. Let's see what they say about that. They recommend 600 words minimum. I think a thousand words minimum, but uh, that's just my opinion. But again, you guys can follow this guide right here. And I believe following this guide right here is optimal. And again, this was from Backlinko, which is an authority on SEO. All right, so let's go back here. So that's basically the basic, the basic SEO, right? Now let's talk about the additional. So first we have focus keyword found in the subheading. So we do have it in our subheadings, right? Next we have the, let's go back to our additional. We have the, the focus keyword found in the alt image attributes. So again, that is referring to the actual images. So when you are creating your blog post, you wanna make sure that you fill out that alt attribute. So 
Uh, I'll go ahead and use this one here. You wanna make sure that you fill this out. So this one's blank. So you wanna make sure that you fill out every single alternative text for every image because that lets Google know what your article is all about. And it's, it's very important actually, it's very, very important. So make sure you always have that on. However, in my other Rank Math video, there's an option to have it automatically propagated on your website. And that's really up to you if you want to use that feature or not. Next, we have keyword density. And here you can see the keyword density is 0.31%, which they are correct. It is pretty low. We should have it more on there but you're not really gonna get penalized and it's not a really that big of a deal. The main focus is you don't want to go over around three to 5%. So for example, right here, uh, we talked about the uh, keyword stuffing. Just make sure it's not above 5% guys, because remember, if you, if you keyword stuff, uh, Google will penalize you and it's really, really hard to come back from that. So just make sure you never end up in that uh, you know pile of poo anyway. So, but yeah, next we have the URL. Now that's, this is, you know, this is debatable, but they believe the URL, the longer it is, the more helpful. Um, that's really rank math talking. That's not me. And that's just their opinion. Um, I don't really know if that makes a big deal on your articles, but uh, that's just their opinion. Here we have the external resource. So just like we actually went over here and we had this outbound link, you want to make sure that you're participating with other websites by adding in outbound links. So Rank Math knows that, and they are saying, good job, you're including external resources. Next, you have one external link with a do follow content found in your content. So I will talk more about do follow and no follow in step three, but uh, essentially a do follow is just a link to another website, kind of giving them credit and juice. So we'll talk more about that a little bit later, but essentially you're giving them a backlink. So that's pretty much it. You are linking to other resources on your website, which is great. And that was basically interlinking. So as you're writing your article, you wanna make sure that you're linking them to other parts of your websites. And again, Google really appreciates interlinking. So make sure to do that on your website. And here you haven't used this focus keyword before. Not really sure what that is. That's just, again, their opinion. Again, guys, don't take everything they say like, like the holy grail, okay? It's really just preference at this point. Next, we have the focus keyword used at the beginning of the SEO title. So of course, and we're gonna jump to this last, but we have this in our title, right? And then here we have your title has a positive or negative sentiment. Now, this again is opinion, so this doesn't really matter too much. Your title contains one power words, booyah. This again, in my opinion, this is just preference, and I don't really think that if you include a quote power word, that's going to decrease or increase your rank and then you are using a number in your SEO title. Now this is actually true. So let's say for example, you go to a website or a blog. What do you guys notice about every single title on every blog or every popular article? Top 10 best this, top five best this. Be honest, you guys love this stuff. Top 15 this, top 10 best plugins. And that's just really what gets hits. It's really what people are interested in because it covers a variety of topics. You know, it covers a lot of stuff rather than just a single topic. So including key or numbers in your articles is actually very interesting. And you know, under $200, that's also very interesting. So when you are writing articles, you know, try to use numbers in your title. I do think that is actually a good practice for SEO. Here we have content readability. Now the first thing they talk about is a table of contents plugin. And yes, this is true. In fact, the elements your plugin does offer a table of contents. Now, the main reason for this is because users are just getting lazier and lazier and we have to accommodate that. So for example, you know, let's just say they wanna you know, read about this drone right here. They can just click on it and it'll take them to that drone right away. It actually does help the users navigate your website better, but ultimately it's just because people are getting lazier and now they need a table of contents to read stuff. But I do agree that it just makes your website easier to navigate. The next one is actually a very important one, and this is short paragraphs. Now, the reason why you want short paragraphs, even on my website, is because if you have a page where it's just a ton of content, that can really deter people away from reading your articles. But if you guys notice on this article right here, you guys will see that we broke it down into several paragraphs, and we do that for various reasons. Number one, we wanna make it categorized. So we wanna kind of categorize the topics. And number two is that we don't wanna overwhelm the weeders. So we don't want just like a page 
of just thousands and thousands of words and no paragraphs or images because that just looks boring and people will click off. So as you're reading or as you're writing your content, make sure you create paragraphs like this, you know, paragraph, paragraph, paragraph to kind of help structure people and to kind of let them know, hey, the, don't worry, this isn't a page of 5,000 words. We've kind of categorized it and we've paragraphed it perfect for you. All right, so let's go back over here and your content contains images and or videos. And guys, that's also a very big one. So you wanna make sure you have images. In fact, the images will actually help the reader kind of navigate your article better by having images. It just, it's easier on the eye guys. And again, with a page that just tons and tons of content and, and letters, it's gonna overwhelm them and they might leave. But when they have these beautiful images right here, it makes them stay and it actually kind of builds interest on your article. So make sure you do have a lot of images on your articles. You don't have to have videos, it's not that important, but the images are actually very, very important. So you guys, yeah, make sure to include that. You guys can see here, I, I have a little video of me, but if you don't have a video, that's okay. You're not gonna get penalized. Don't worry about it, it's not that big of a deal. So now let's go ahead and talk about the actual snippet. So let's go over here to my post. Now this is your title right here. Now, personally, I like to add a little bit more in my title. So for example, if I click on this arrow right here, we can add in other options right here. Now, a good thing to add here is the current year. Now, I personally like adding in the year on my articles because it just shows that the content is relevant, but uh, that's really up to you. So the title, we have the current year. Now also, maybe also you can add a separator in the middle. It really depends on what you wanna add in here. So let's see if we have a separator. I think we can just add one, right? I think we can just manually type one, right? Can we do that? There we go. So we can just add a separate in there and then add in the year or something like that, but, or like this, there you go, 2021. And if you guys go to like the search engines, you guys are gonna find out that a lot of people put the year because it just creates a more relevant article. So title, separator, and then current year. That's my personal opinion. Uh, on my website, DurrellWilson.com, I just have the title and then I also have the current year and current month for my reviews. But uh, for my regular articles, I just have the title and that's pretty much it. Next, we have the permalink. Now, Rank Math recommends that you have the keyword in your permalink. Personally, I don't think it matters too much, but that's strictly preference and it could have some sort of you know impact, but it should not be significant and it probably won't influence your rank at all. So don't worry about that too much. Next, we have the description of our actual article right here. So if you are looking for the best drones for under $200, which is our keyword, we have reviewed several drones and have only chosen the best drones for your needs. So as you're writing your actual article, you want to make sure that you introduce your keyword again in the meta description. In fact, that was one of the actual um, recommendations from Yoast, or I'm sorry, from Rank Math. Okay, so here it is. So the, the focus keyword found in the SEO meta description. So just make sure that you include the the keyword of what you're writing about in your actual description. And remember, just create something that's very interesting and that kind of helps users understand why to click your article. Now, I can't really give you guys advice on that, but uh, you guys can kind of you know go through that. And personally, I would not use this here. I would not use their little arrow thing. I would always manually type everything in for my description, just because we wanna make sure that it appears how we want. Um, even for the title guys, I mean, I would recommend just putting in everything manually for posts. For pages, you guys can get away with using, you know, these, um, I guess you wanna call them these, these tools, but for your posts, you guys should always manually create everything. It just makes things a lot easier. So that's basically a quick rundown of these options right here. Now let's go ahead and talk about these other options right here and what they are referring to. So the advanced tab, essentially what you guys all need to know here is that you just wanna make sure that this is under index. So we want Google to actually index this entire blog right here. If you have it on no index, that means Google will not index this and that it will not appear in the search engine. So just make sure that it is under index. Also, if you guys want to redirect this article to another article, let's say, for example, you guys are running a Black Friday sale, right? But uh, it's not Black Friday no more. So maybe you want to redirect people from Black Friday sales to another sale. So you can go ahead and put another URL here. So you can put in, you know, whatever URL you want, and you can redirect them to another page on your website if you want to do that. Next, we have 
the schema markup, and this is only available in their pro version. Essentially what this does is that this will allow your articles to get featured in rich snippets. So for example, I just typed in the best TV theme plugins and you can see that this is a featured snippet. So um, this is created by Elegant Themes and Google believes that this content is very relevant. So they have created a featured snippet for it. So as long as your content's very relevant and it's good content, there's a good chance that it might actually get picked up and have its own featured snippet. So that's just something to consider. And lastly, we have the, the snippet editor. So uh, let's go back here. I'll actually go back to the, uh, the social right here. So I'll click on social. And this essentially is just how you want your content being displayed in Facebook or on Twitter. So here we have the actual title and you can add a custom image and then you can change the title or the description. So that's really up to you if you wanna have different titles and descriptions for social media websites. Uh, again, that's really preference. And then you can do the same thing here for Twitter as well. So guys, make sure you go ahead and follow this article when you're writing your content. Try to follow every rule here. And when you are writing articles, just follow every single thing on this blog post and you guys should be fine. The only thing that I might add right here is adding in paragraphs. I don't think I included that in here. So I think I might. And again, uh, that's how you guys can achieve a high resulting uh, score with Rank Math. And remember, it's not imperative that it gets a green little check mark or whatever, but as long as you have a majority of the content and the rules applied, you should have a good quality content that ranks high on Google. So now let's move on to step three. Now, I've already made these videos for my Amazon affiliate tutorial. However, I wanna include them here. So I'm gonna talk about what the difference between a do follow back link is and a no follow back link. And then we'll also talk about what is domain authority and what is page authority. Now, let me explain to you how the Google rankings work for your Amazon affiliate marketing website. You start by writing reviews and content for specific products on Amazon. You optimize these posts for Google, then Google will index them and place them in the Google search results. Visitors will then find your blog post, and this is how traffic is generated to your Amazon affiliate marketing websites. However, there are some factors to consider that will help users find your blog post more easier. First, let's talk about page authority. But what is page authority? Page authority is the overall score and ranking on how that specific post or page is ranking in the search results. The higher the page authority, the higher it will appear in the Google search results. Each time you write a post, it's given a score from one to 100 by Google. And this is determined by various factors in the Google algorithm, such as readability, structure, optimization, and the quality of your article. In short, if the blog post is high quality and contains very relevant information for users, then it will be given a higher page score and be placed higher in the search results, making your website easier to find. So make sure you write quality content that would actually help someone to get more traffic to your websites. Next, let's talk about domain authority. So what is domain authority? Domain authority is also listed from the score from one to 100 and is the overall score and credibility of your websites. There are several factors that can help you increase your domain authority of your website, such as, users interacting on your website, like commenting and sharing, reputable websites linking back to your website with good domain authority, and making sure that your posts and pages are fully optimized for Google. Higher domain authority helps greatly for future posts, and usually Google will rank your posts a little higher in the search results by default if you have a higher domain authority because you have already established a good record. Think of websites like a popularity contest. If you have a bunch of large reputable websites linking back to your website, Google recognizes this and will boost your overall domain authority because credible websites are referring to your websites. This also helps generate more traffic to your website because people can find your website a lot easier from other various websites. You can gain backlinks by simply outreaching to high domain authority websites and seeing if you can exchange links. There's also various companies that will do this for you for a small fee because it can be very time consuming. You can gain a higher domain authority by obtaining do follow backlinks from credible and high domain authority websites. And remember, backlinks are essential for your website's domain authority score. So to summarize, that's how the Google rankings work and also how you can get more traffic to your Amazon affiliate websites. So I hope that made sense. Domain authority is essentially the strength and the overall score of your website. I'll leave this in the description below. So for example, the AREFs, the website authority checker, you can go ahead and put in your domain here and check the website authority. And then it'll give you a little bit of information about it, like your domain rating, the websites linking to it, and the number of backlinks uh, to your website. And remember, 
the higher domain authority websites linking back to your websites, the more popular or stronger your domain authority will become. So that's a quick overview of domain authority and also how to check PageRank as well. Now you guys can use these tools to check PageRank, but don't get too hung up on them. Uh, it's not the, you know, as long as your content's ranking, you know, that's really all that matters. And um, yeah, just be mindful about that. Once later down the road, you know, you get more established and you don't have time to write content and you're making sales, you can actually hire full time content writers to write content for your website, like Texan. You can use iWriter.com and also uh, BKA content. I'm familiar with uh, iWriter.com. And uh, this website actually is really cheap and they actually use a website that uh, watches for plagiarism. So that's also very important. Whenever you get articles from any one of these three, uh, use some sort of plagiarism checker. I'm sure you can Google it and find five websites or something that watches that. And um, make sure that your content is not uh, copied because if you do have content that's copied, uh, that'll actually be very bad for your website and there's a chance you can lose domain authority because then they, they think you're some scraper website, which is just websites that just scrape other content off websites and hoping they rank for it. So you don't want to do that. So make sure uh, you check out these websites. It's a very quick way on how to, uh, you know, get your business up and running. Also, for those of you who need backlinks. Now, before we talk about backlinks, I need to explain uh, do follow backlinks and also no follow backlinks just so you fully understand what I'm talking about. Next, let's talk about backlinks. There are two type of backlinks. There is a do follow backlink and there is a no follow backlink. And the difference between both are pretty important. A do follow backlink will help you boost your domain authority and you will get traffic to your website. Essentially, a do follow backlink helps improve your overall score of your page authority, domain authority, and are considered very favorable. Now let's talk about a no follow backlink. A no follow backlink is still a backlink to your website, but it does not give you all of the benefits of a do follow backlink. For example, a no follow backlink does not affect your page rank or domain authority. However, it still brings traffic to your website. Some very large reputable websites create no follow backlinks to prevent their website from being associated with lower ranking websites in order to protect their own domain authority. So in short, when you're looking for backlinks from popular companies or reputable companies, Make sure it's a do follow backlink so you get a boost of page ranking and domain authority for your websites. And if it's a popular website that still receives traffic, a no follow backlink is still a win because ultimately you are still receiving traffic from that website. However, if you have a bunch of low domain authority websites linking back to your website, that doesn't really say much about your website and generally your ranking will not improve. You can gain backlinks by simply outreaching to high domain authority websites and seeing if you can exchange links. There's also various companies that will do this for you because it can be very time consuming. So essentially, this is how the backlink system works and how to get more traffic to your websites. So in a nutshell, that is backlink explained and that is the difference between a do follow backlink and a no follow backlink. So party people, I hope that helped you guys out. If you guys have any questions for me, feel free to let me know in the comments below. If you guys do wanna learn more about backlinks and where to get you know, high domain authority backlinks or you guys need help with it, you guys can go ahead and check out this video. I do talk a lot about domain authority and also other topics on where to get good content writers for your website in this video, a little bit towards the end. So I'll go ahead and put this in the description below this video. But with that said, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. I did my best and I really made a detailed article to help all of you guys out. And let me know how I did in the comments below. My name is Daryl Wilson and I will see all of you guys in the next video. Take care guys.